Good day and welcome to Ugama TV. This is Frontliner, reaching you live from Coast City, Enugu State. And today we'll be explaining uh, issues bordering uh, Nigeria. And we'd like to start from our own very state, that's Enugu State. Uh, the governor of Enugu State, His Excellency uh, Barrister Peter Ndubisimba, marked 100 days in office. And within these 100 days, a lot of uh, development have unfolded. So we'll just be analyzing so far, so good, and what are the areas or what are those things he still need to do uh, to make sure that he entrenched good governance in the state. And with me to do this analysis this morning is uh, a legal practitioner and a property consultant, barrister J.O. Onyagbo. Sir, you are welcome to me. All right, so uh, I'm Emmanuel Tewasi, your host for this session. All right, so moving on, 100 days in office, the, most of the governors in the southeast, Eboin, Abia, and Enugu, yeah. have marked 100 days. Yes. So starting from Enugu, uh, what is your overall view of uh, the governor's performance so far? Well, um, first of all, <clears throat> you know, like you rightly pointed out, political analysts look at... Um, achievements comparatively, comparatively considering this economic situation of each state. But one can simply say that the Enugu State Governor, Dr. Peter Ndobi Simba, has actually displayed some passion and desire to put Enugu in a good map. Yes, and that desire has been dramatized by some of the key achievements he made, starting from appointments and what have you. Yes, what I can easily say, but for now, that the issue of water, which he had actually promised when he took uh, office 100 days ago, 100 days ago, yes, has been improved. But of course, some of us that are not pol core politicians, we criticize government constructively. I simply say there are room for improvement, but it has done quite well. The starting has been quite good. One can easily say that he has dramatized his desire to change the narratives. He has done a lot of things, starting from appointments. If you take a look at most of the appointments he made, he actually took some technocrats who are going to change the narratives in the state. So one can say the 100 days in office of His Excellency Dr. Peter Ndubi Simba, if they continue with that pace, Definitely in the next few years, the state will regain its status as the capital of the southeastern part of the country. Yes. Okay, uh, talking about uh, some of the efforts he has put in place, uh, yes. he has made, uh, particularly the issue of water. Yes. If you paid attention to his speech yesterday, he said, uh, so far so good. Enugu have started generating 25 million liters of water. And the, the plan in a, in, a, in a short time is to generate 40, uh, 70 million uh, liters per day. And looking at the work going on at uh, Ninth Mayan or G River, uh, one would uh, say that uh, these things are quite achievable. But looking at politics in our own climb, where uh, what is said is somehow not what is being uh, obtainable, do you think? This is achievable. Yes, of course, I agree with you that uh, politicians, Nigerian politicians, will be saying, wanting, and doing different things. But as regards this water issue in Enugu State, yes, I think I have seen some of the projects, ongoing projects, that has to alleviate the sufferings of uh, Enugu residents as regards water. And of course, as a governor that has the interest of his people, if you know Enugu very well, the biggest challenge an average Enugu resident has is water. And... Uh, the progress so far made, like I said, if they continue with that, because there are rooms for improvement. One cannot simply say, yes, it is now Uhuru. We're not yet there. Okay. But it has shown some signs. There are a lot of projects, ongoing projects that has to do with this uh, water supply and what have you. So if they continue with this, definitely, definitely, it is achievable. That 70 million liters of water is achievable if they continue with this pace. The most important thing is that he should not be deterred. They should not feel we've arrived because 
civilization every day you continue to have influx of people coming into the state so there should be room for improvement to accommodate more numbers of people coming to the state but to the best of my knowledge some of the residents in enugu have actually said yes we've seen water i can't talk of my area because every place in enugu have not been piped so they will still take i know it is one project to another when the water is running then you begin to expand so there are rooms for expansion so that so many places now that doesn't have water will definitely get connected to the government pipe water. Okay, yes. so uh, moving away from water, he, uh, if you look at the speech, he said uh, he would rehabilitate 260 uh, etiquette centers, uh, construct 81 roads, uh, which uh, includes two flyovers at uh, Holy Ghost of Betimi Market yeah. and Abakpa. Then, uh, he also made mention of a uh, uh, housing scheme for, yeah. for residents. Looking at uh, the high cost of rent and uh, the issue of land grabbing and all of those things uh, prevalent mm -hmm. in Enugu State, uh, what, what do you make of Yes, it? of course, at, at one of our um, interviews, we talk extensively as regards governments, uh, uh, the need for government to intervene in the housing schemes and uh, participate to alleviate the sufferings of uh, the Enugu residents as regards uh, house rent and what have you. Talking about constructing roads, infrastructural development, and in taking consideration to this infrastructure decay we have in Enugu, the governor have a lot to do there. He has a lot to do there. Take a look at uh, some of the major, major areas in Enugu. They don't have any motorable roads. I can mention places. Talk about, look at uh, Goshen Estate, Loma Linda Extension, Akuke area. So many people, even the Ababa, are talking about these areas need serious government attention. And at the moment there are infrastructure consigned in most of these places, of course, development will start coming into, into those areas. Then, talking about flyovers, he talked about, of course, Enugu is gradually turning into, if not for the fact that fuel price has been just increased and there, there are no much vehicle, vehicular movement on the road, if not, the Lagos traffic has gradually come to our place in Enugu, courtesy of bad roads. Because if there are so many exit and entrance points where the roads are good, definitely the city center will not be congested as, as it is presently. So the issue of road construction, flyovers, housing schemes is something the government should pay so much attention to. Because for the past eight years, this sector has have actually been neglected. So if you take a closer look at it, you see most of the roads are going from bad to worse. So his intervention in that area is highly, highly needed. And if they do that, I think that will give every average Enugu resident a sense of belonging that, yes, we can hit our chest and say we've got a governor who is responsive to his responsibility. Okay. Yes. Uh, so uh, still talking about uh, uh, the government agenda for the state. Yes. Enugu had its uh, I say first uh, roundtable economic uh, summit, okay. which attracted a lot of investors yeah. across uh, the globe. Yes, and that is to chat with towards uh, investment in uh, agro businesses, small scale businesses, and yes. other uh, areas of the economy. Yes. So, what are you looking uh, up for? First of all, I must commend the governor for taking that initiative okay. but that taking that initiative st should not stop at that you see when you're talking about investment you must make your environment what we call investment friendly you have actually taken it a step by informing them we intend to do this what remains now is for the government of the day to match words with action matching words with, with action is making the environment conducive for investment heaven Okay. You can't invite an investor who, of course, is not safe, who do not feel the state is safe for him, who cannot drive on a tired road to his residence, who cannot run any business where there are electricity, who cannot run business where there are locks up and down every day, who cannot run businesses where he do not have access to justice if there is any, who cannot run his business where there are patronage, because patronage is all about residence in the state, because whatever production or whatever you go into, what you look at are the end users. Who are those people to use whatever I do? And if you're talking about agro business, definitely the environment must be conducive for them to go invest or plant whatever they are here for. Okay. So invariably, 
is a good initiative, but the government should match words with action. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, so you, you said something about making the environment conducive. Uh, this has to do with uh, issues of security and uh, economic policies. And in the area of security, he has made frantic efforts to one end the sit at home, uh, uh, called the culture of sit at home in the state, and has also launched the distress response squad, which is quite commendable on on his part. So, uh, what else? You know, what do you make of that? Well, uh, like um, we discussed in our last interview, I must first of all commend him for the boot step he took as regards uh, sit at home. Then again, talking about uh, the vehicles he acquired for security apparatus, that is this rapid response uh, vehicles. Yes. yes, it's a commendable effort. I must commend him sincerely for doing that. However, they should not stop at that because one thing is to provide vehicles for security apparatus. Another thing is playing a supervised role to ensure those vehicles are used for the purpose of his purchase. Yes, because security is not one person's uh, business. But I, like exactly. I used to say everywhere I have opportunity of saying it, the best and the fastest way to fight insecurity is to provide jobs for the teeming unemployed Nigerian youths, particularly the residents of Enugu. We do not have industries here. We do not have companies. So every average Enugu resident uh, majorly is either an agent or one might manner job or the other. But if government intervenes, create environments for little businesses, create environments where youths can gainfully get themselves busy, of course, it can to a reasonable extent reduce drastically the security challenges we have in the state. Okay. Then again, Talking about uh, the rapid response vehicles they provided, like I said earlier, there should be a follow-up so that those officers will not abuse the privileges of using those vehicles. Yes, it's very, very important. Or it will not be used as usual. Load uh, roadblocks for only God knows their interest. Yes. So okay. that's my take about that. Okay, so... Uh Coming to issues of economic policies, uh, Enugu basically, I, I would say, uh, aside from the code that we have, another business uh, which Enugu residents are into most is, is, is the issue of housing. Yes. A lot of young people are agents. A lot yeah. of people are uh, real estate uh, uh, investors and yeah, all you're of right. those So, right. uh, But the issue of rent is on a very high side. Yes. And uh, for you to get a house now, you have to, a, a good, comfortable house, at least you should have uh, at least 800,000 or true. more. You understand? So uh, about this issue, what, what do you think can be done to salvage the, the situation? Yes, I continue saying it that government's uh, participation in housing schemes in the state will play a lot of role in alleviating the sufferings of the masses in the state. Okay. Particularly anything that has to do with land. There are policies that has to do with land tenure system here. It should be very friendly. Unfortunately, I don't know who advised the governor. Do I am yet to confirm officially. Okay. But a few days ago, I got uh, a, a, a schedule of payment for a power of attorney. You know, what we call power of attorney is something you, uh, an interest in land you register in the state, a minister of land, just temporarily. Those ones are not like C of O. But of course, it's recognized within the state here. Before now, it is been, the, the fee is not above 150000 But I got to Minister of Lands a few days ago. They gave me a schedule of payment at the rate of 5411000 naira, a plot of land. Okay. Well, I still don't want to believe that is coming from the government uh, uh, point. But if it is, that means government were ill-advised. Okay. Because everything we do in Enugu revolves around land. And how can a land owner who purchased land within the range of a 10 million, 12 million, and thereabout, and use 5 million naira to get his interest, power of attorney on the line, registered with the, uh, in the Ministry of Lands? Yes. And what do you expect such person after complete, completing the building or after construction, the fate of the tenants who would be the end users? 
because the tenant will definitely pay this bogus uh, charge for registration. So the policies, all the government policies that has to do with land in Enugu State should be very friendly, should put into consideration that Enugu State does not have any other means of survival apart from things that revolve around land. And government place so much charges on lands, it will create more difficulty in housing schemes in the state. I thank you very much for mm -hmm. uh, your time today. And uh, this is where we end the program. Don't forget it's Frontliner on Ogama TV. And I have been Emmanuel was your host. And with me in the studio uh, is a legal practitioner and property consultant barrister J.O. Ogamba. Don't forget to follow us on our social media feeds. You can follow us on Facebook at Ogama TV on Instagram as Ugama TV one and YouTube as Ugama TV. Also, you can do well by following us on, our, you can follow our blog where we get you uh, updated of day-to-day -day activities within Nigeria and across the globe on www.ugamatv.com. It's been a wonderful time with you today and I remain Emmanuel Tewasi. Bye for now. When you think of online TV and radio, broadcasting, media consultancy, event coverage, event management and planning, there's no better name than Ogama TV. But that's not all. We're also into photo studio and coverage, e-commerce, documentaries, TV and radio jingles, adverts, video editing, post-production, makeup, web design, graphic design, equipment rental, promotions, branding and awards, talent hunt, film making, news blogging, fashion and pageantry, printing. We also run a music studio and help you execute your video shoots. We are at number 5 at stroke 21 Upper Chime Avenue beside Open Sheraton Restaurant, New Heaven, Enugu. For more information, call 0816-370-0950 or 0811-098-9688. Follow us on our social media handles, Facebook at Ogama TV, Instagram at Ogama TV One, Twitter at Ogama TV, website www.ogamatv.com. You can also send us email at ogamatv at gmail.com. Ogama TV, your one-stop media solution.